Okay, here we got a 990 Adventure in our driveway, KTM. This belongs to Ken, he's out trying the 500. And he came by to watch the 690. Okay. All right. Well, I think there's there's an adjustment I can unscrew a little bit under here. Uh -huh. That'll that'll crank that up. Yeah, that was fun too. You can really feel the weight difference, but I kind of like the ergonomics on the 690 better. Mm -hmm. You know, it was more uh, felt more natural, and I don't know. Probably the the motor was torquier, but. This one had more whiz because of the weight of the bike is lighter. You can feel it. Acceleration's a little quicker. But mm -hmm. I think I like that motor better. It just feels more, you know, torquey. Yeah. You know. And does this have a balance shaft in it or of any kind? I think it does. It's pretty small though. It's not as big as that one. No. Yeah, that one felt a lot smoother. But because these are really designed more for the the, the enduro guy who uh -huh. wants the horsepower and last one up the road. But, uh, you know, it's been sitting around for a while since I got the 690. It hasn't been ridden for several months. Well, kind of cruel, isn't it? I know. <laughs> but I've been trying to break the other one in, and Deacon seems to like it. The seat's better. Yeah, it's, well, there's more seat. Yeah. It goes up further, and he's got more play area, and area to hang on to. By the way, I didn't turn my um, um, camera on when we were over here talking about the difference between the 690. So if you want to talk about the, the difference between the 690 and 990 and what you liked about the 690, that'd be super. Okay. <laughs> the, uh... okay so right in here, as far as the idle, there's a, and it's really, and it's also a, a choke, too, that you can pull. There is a choke. Yeah, but they say you don't need it. For fuel injection, I wouldn't think so, but... Yeah, know. so it's basically way up in there, and it's kind of hard to get to, and I kind of, you know, to if I'm increasing the idle or something, it's just a little knob right about there, and um, so I could change that. So, 990, they call their engines LC8. They have an LC4 on the 690. Okay, so why don't you tell us about what you found different between the 990 and the 690, or what you like about the 690. <laughs> well, obviously, number one would be weight difference. 500 pounds of the full tank is a lot of, quite a handful when you're off-road, and uh, I uh, really enjoyed having uh, good ergonomics, narrow, I'm gonna get the sun comfy seat, you. as well as uh, everything was laid out nicely, and uh, it had a, a smoother, flatter power band. The torque curve was, it wasn't peaky at all, it was real flat. Which is a lot more useful. As compared to the 990 or the 500? Uh, probably the 500. This thing doesn't do anything below 3,000 RPM. It just won't really? do it. It's just all chunky and weird. As you get over 3,000, then it runs great. All the mm -hmm. way to the red line, 90, 500, whatever. But I don't see that too often. But being a you know twin V, 75 degree V, it really has plenty of power when you want it. So you got to be ready for it. You know, mm -hmm. It's like 115 ponies, which is what you need with 500 pounds. The lighter the bike, the less motor you need. But sure. I really enjoyed the 690s feel for, uh, it was responsive, you know, all the way from the bottom up. There was no dead zones anywhere. And mine, like I say, under mm -hmm. 3,000, it's just not much there. You just keep it above 3,000 unless you're coasting. So do you and, think uh, you would? It felt pretty light, you know, I like, it felt like, didn't feel like 300 and whatever you said, 5 Yeah, 315. Pounds. Yeah, it felt like 270 yeah. or something. I don't know why. Maybe the center of gravity is low because of the gas tank in the rear down low. Maybe that helps. Because this thing's kind of like that, too. It got the battery underneath the skid plate. It's or underneath the engine under the skid plate. 
Mm -hmm. And all the fuel's down low, so it, it feels pretty low. It's pretty light, you know, and it, when you flick it back and forth, it feels like a lighter bike. But still, it's, you know, you, you have to pick it up. You know it's 500 pounds, but that's normal. Well, this is quite the seat you got on here. Well, yeah. I'll just point that out. Look how wide that is. Yeah, that's, that's what the guy in uh, Bill Meyer, Mayer in uh, Southern California, he swears by it. And sure enough, it's instead of a 40 mile seat, it's a all day seat. And uh, I don't tailbone pain for me was not any fun. Okay. So well, how do you think away, this would be on a trip then? Or? You know, I don't know. It, it felt I didn't feel anything at all. No pressure points, and it is softer. So, and it's a little bit wider. Mm -hmm. You should be riding up here, and I guess your butt would be here. So it's probably wide enough to distribute the load. What's nice is you got all the seat to really get your nuts up there in the front if you're going to go through a berm, right? Yeah, well, if you really want to put a weight on the front tire and make it work, that's the way to do it. Yeah, the, the 500 that I got at the last KTM Orange event, it's not as wide as that one, but they still, compared to the stock one, which is really narrow, had this narrow little well, band I was, here. I was looking at some of the Huskies you know? and some of the KTM motorbikes, and it's they're meant not to be sat on. No, there's no place for your nuts. No, no you just have to stand you know, all day long, which yeah. is okay, you know, for deep woods, but on the road, so you this was, to sit down occasionally. Yeah, so this was better, I think, I really, uh, so when I had that cost. put on. Uh, it's about 250 almost $300 if you... This was $140 at the KTM Orange event, and they re replaced it on the same pan the same day, within oh. an hour. Oh, that okay. one, I had, they didn't, they don't warrant the stock pan. Yeah. And I can actually pull that seat out, going here into the man cave. There you go. Yeah, come on out in the light. That's a, not too bad for a KTM seat. They're notorious for not making real good seats. Yeah. You see, it's a lot more angular everywhere. It's got sharp lines yeah. as they carve it but the into it. The density isn't all that much different. This is a little harder. Well, I think it's because of the weight I gave them. Um, based on my weight, they, they firmed up the amount of oh, foam because okay. they tune it to yeah. that. Oh, that's a good idea. So, but I guess this particular section here is considered fairly weak, and that's what... On theirs, on this one here, they they strengthen that up some. Yeah, if you got to you waited between these support points, it's definitely going to get mm -hmm. some flexing going on. But it is glass filled; I can see it in there. That's pretty yeah. good. That's pretty amazing. That's a step in the right direction. Huh? Yeah, I'll just keep cool. that around. I think I don't I don't know why. I I didn't. Well, first of all, I didn't want to have to send it off. I thought I was going to run out of time when we were going to go to Moab, and yeah. I didn't want to take a lot of time for that. Change your schedule? Yeah, it's good. We waited a month and a half because it was too freezing. Yeah. It was really bad. The time I went was early May, and it was just about perfect. Uh huh. I think earlier would have been a little nippy. Oh, well, last year we were there in March, and it was, it was great. Really? It got up to 70 in the, in the evening or during the day. It was. It made it 35 in the morning when we took off from the hotel. Uh -huh. um, but like I say, if this, like this, um, compared with the, the 690, um, I don't know if you've ever ridden a DRZ before, but nope. but this guy, yeah, well, yeah, it'd be the same, right? So this, this weighs the same as the 690, but only has half the horsepower. Yeah, it's not going to cut it. <laughs> yeah, so it was, uh, it, it was, so I think if I was able to take this around Moab and, and around Uray, I shouldn't have any trouble taking that 690 no, there too. Not at all. You know? I think it'll do really well. Well, here we're, this is my Norton P11. Dang, what year is he? It's a 1968. College. <laughs> yeah, I had a friend that had a Velocet 500 single and goes, if you can start this bike, you can jump over buildings with a single bound. <laughs> well, it would be nice to start it with somebody here because I can take a video up. There's a guy in um, Missouri who's interested in buying it. And um, 
Although I don't, I'm it's not trend, under. Too. Yeah, it does. I'm not under any pressure to, to sell it, sure. but still, I, I don't want to hurt it. I don't want to. <laughs> it's museum quality. Yeah. Well, here, just I'll take that for me and just aim it. Okay. And I'll actually let's, let's go ahead and pull it out. I think it'd be time to change the gas in it anyway. This is uh, down here is for the any oil that may come out. It's interesting, the fellow I was talking to had asked me if it, if it leaked oil, and I said, well, it is a British bike. <laughs> Look at Harley. Got to have um, a leak somewhere. So this has been sitting around now at least four or five months since I started it last. I was trying to do that every couple weeks. And the, uh, I think the battery still has some, yeah, there's still some poop in it. Don't know what that little plate is. Heat sink of some kind. Must be transistor ignition, eh? It's like everything loosened Off up in this thing. Two foot pegs, not. How do you turn? You're too funny. Well, hi. Nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you. Thanks for coming by. Now, you work in your physical therapist, or I'm an acupuncturist. Acupuncturist. Yeah. My wife and I both do uh, Chinese medicine and you know, natural medicine. Uh huh. Yeah. I did body work for years too. Well, I saw a guy advertising for free acupuncture for veterans. <laughs> really? Over just off South Boulder Road, I was thinking about dropping by there and try it out because I got back problems. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah, I've done that for like police officers and uh, yeah? firemen too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Actually, when I was trying to get off my, my business off the ground. <laughs> I see. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm just too busy to do it. Okay. Know? Well, let me get to, let, let you take the 690 out. Actually, I'm going to go sure. in the house, okay. but it was nice meeting you. Check this out. Too. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Okay. Thanks, son. <laughs> Yeah, so this uh, is Dave. He also he watched one of my videos, and so he wanted to test ride a 690 because he hadn't seen one because they're in short supply. They are. So we just earlier had uh, Ken from Arvada with a KTM 990, Sweet. and um, so he came by and drove it. So, But this is a really fancy scooter. <laughs> Look at this thing. Boy, where you been on this? Oh, gosh. Lost for a reason. Lost for a reason, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Yeah. And then, you know, local, all mostly day trips. Um, yeah. This year I'm looking to do some overnight trips on it. Um, last year was my first year uh, doing the adventure motorcycling, so okay. I came out of a Harley. Wow. For two years. This big, is big change. Story. Big change, but I love it. Can we get a picture with Deacon on it? With who? With Deacon? Oh, absolutely. Deacon, come up here. <laughs> come on. He's a pro. Look at that. Doc. Yeah. There, there you go. Yeah, that's, we'll put some dog hair on it. Go ahead. Yeah, let's sit down. See, you've got the, you've got the, whoops. Say, stay. Good dog. He can't, he's a little bit kitty wampus. So, there he goes. All right, well, that was fun. Yeah, that's the name Deacon. Look at all these lights and stuff. Boy, you've got all the bells and whistles. Is all this stock? It's the adventure model, so it, it you know they beef it up for off road. You know, they okay. Put, they put the skid plate on and you know these bars. Uh -huh. I mean, the, the regular GS doesn't come with all this. Have you ever laid it down? You know, twice, but in the snow. Oh, okay. I was we so were, at least you're trying new things. Yeah, we were we were doing some water crossings, um, some snow, um, a little bit of snow because we uh -huh. had to get through some patches. Um, that was last spring. We were up pretty high, up around twelve thousand feet. You know, rampart. Yeah. We were down in Rampart. Oh. In those areas. You were in the Rampart Range Trail system around well, Sprucewood Bar and that sort of stuff? Well, I, I don't know where that is, but we, we've been there as a group. Um, there's okay. a bunch of guys. Then we were then we did some mountain passes. We started in Rampart and then went up. But uh, So honestly, did you go over 
like Cottonwood Pass and Hancock Pass or anything like that? Or? I honestly I can't remember. Um, cause How it's gnarly only, was it for you? For me, I was in the lead pack with the experienced motocross guys who yeah. also had GSs, and I kept up with them. I I, wow. I dumped it twice. I laid it down in the snow. I didn't like walk out. Okay. It was real easy. No scratches. Or yeah, anything. it's like a two miles an hour. Oops. Yeah. Oh, just yeah. lost the weight. Okay. But other than that, you know, they they trained me well. Um, <laughs> Sounds like and they're I kept great. Up with them. Look at these risers. Why well, is that stock or is that is that something you put on? Oh, the risers I put yeah. on the rocks. Okay, because yeah, you're inch. you're about my height. Yeah, six, right. six two. Yeah. Six two. Yeah. Yeah. The last guy came by was six six. <laughs> Holy oh, you know, but. And he and he sat on the uh, six ninety. Oh, we I'd let him take it. I'll let you take it too. Awesome. Let's pull it out. Yeah, it'd be great. And if you want to try also, uh, you can try a, an actual five hundred XCW, which is wow. the more pure enduro style. Now your style is, uh, you come from the motocross world, is that it? Uh, flat track. Flat. I like wow. rounding, and I did road racing, I did race Daytona in 2000, Jeez. but I, I'm just a trailer. I gave up motorcycles in 2000. I thought I'd never ride a motorcycle again until I had a friend who, whose father and him used to go ride around Ure every year. Yeah. And, and so I said, and then when his father died, then, um, and his father's friends had died, yeah. I said, okay, Russ, I will buy a motorcycle as long as you promise me I'm never going to fall down. We're just going to, we're not going to chase each other, we're just going to trail ride. Right. He says, that's all I ever do. Okay. And, and 30 years he's been driving his little Honda, he's, he said he's only gone over maybe twice. But since then, since I kept talking about KTMs all the time, he just, he went and bought a KTM 450 ahead of me, you know, yeah. and I go, Nard work. You know, grumble, grumble, grumble. But anyway, yeah. so then I ended up getting the 500 XCW last May. Yeah. And the 690 was an, was because of my other buddy who bought the 690. And I am I wanted to make sure we didn't get into any place gnarly enough that he wouldn't be able to go. And the only way I'd know that if I have also the same motorcycle as he does. Jeez. So that's the reason. <laughs> All a right, good so. reason. I like it. Okay. Well, anyway, it's a, at my age, the friendships are more important than the money you're spending on the, the bikes yeah. to be able to ride, be compatible with That's them. But great. come on, let me open up the garage. And we're in the man cave. Ken, who dropped by, he has a 2004 uh, Blue Z06. Are you kidding me? And he was also in the Navy. We had so much things in common. Age? Yeah, That's yeah. Cool. And he he needs to find some. And he says he has trouble finding guys to go riding with him because all of his younger friends that ride are all working. That's right. Right. So he can yeah. go during the week. And so now this is going to be a great contact. I, mean, I know you've been trying to get all the men I'm working all the time. I know. So let me pull this thing out. How old are you? Again? I'm. Uh, uh, it'll be 68 this year. 68, okay. And I pulled off all the bags, the little saddlebag things, so that you can just experience the uh, the bike as it is without all this stuff on it. But you've got so much things on your bike already. Oh, it's this this would probably not even get in the way of it. Let's see what both supporting Wolfman. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's a local guy, right? No, yeah. I went up to the store to get my uh, my bags. That's great. And they're perfect for that. That's yeah. a beautiful bike. It's the first time I've seen it in person. Yeah, you should, uh, Ooh, you set them next to a 990. It looks like a smaller version. Yeah. Uh, the same. And, and is all that stock or is it? Well, I'll, ex I'll explain. Um, I don't think you need to do anything to it. Actually, it came with a plastic. Um, uh, skid plate already. Yeah. But a lot of people change it to aluminum because they think maybe it's not going to be strong enough. Right. So I, all I did is, is put several layers of carbon fiber on it just That's to it. stiffen up so it is more impact resistant. That's it. That's and then I put this wings muffler on it only because it weighs five pounds lighter. The the stock yeah. muffler weighs ten pounds. This weighs five pounds. Oh. And the reason, well. Plus, my Navy buddy bought one. Yeah. So I'm trying to ma match my bike to his bike. Okay. 
So, so when it comes to Farkle, we're kind of doing the same thing. So, here. gas tank is on the rear. Oh, gas tank. So, this is actually the gas tank right here, underneath your fender. So, don't go screwing your license plate across the top of this, yep. like I thought about doing. And uh, when they put these things in Dakar and stuff, they actually uh, expand this to the side a little bit to get more gas on it. Okay. When they do things like that. Um, the seat is is not the same seat. This is a little bit wider seat, so it's more comfortable mm -hmm. from seat concepts. Mm -hmm. um, the gas cap is different, and this is a billet one. The one that is normally that comes onto it has this little snap type thing you lift over, yep. but it's flush to this. So if there's any kind of dirt, like you see the dirt that's in here, right. as soon as you open up, that dirt is falling in. Oh. So everybody has gone to this billet. Um, so it actually lifts everything up so you can, when you put your nozzle in, it doesn't, um, you get any dirt in it. So that's changed, the seat has changed, muffler has changed, reinforced the skid plate. Uh, I got rid of the big mirrors on it only because I'm, I'm going to be riding dirt right. and I didn't want to knock them off. But if on, on street, I would say leave them on. You can see really good with them. Okay. But these are Cherbis, which is what I've got, if you see over here on the 500. Yep. See, so I got two of them on that, because it's a street legal, legal enduro. Nice. And um, so they're, um, that's all you need. You can fold them out of the way. Mm -hmm. so, um, so if you're concerned about falling down, see, you can just, these things just rotate up like that. So you just rotate them down, get them out of the way. Oh, nice. When you're out riding. And then right. to be street legal, you have to have the mirror. Right. That makes right. sense. So the That's other... a good thing either. Yeah. <laughs> so the other thing... Uh, what else did I do? I did add the Scott steering stabilizer. Every time I fell, fell down, and it may have occurred with you too when you did in the snow, yeah. is that something happened, you did a little click like that, and next mm -hmm. thing it'll pop over. The steering stabilizer keeps a sudden jerk. It keeps the front end going straight even when something else is trying to force you to turn. Like you get in a, a tire track or a groove, right. in the groove or the mud, and then it's hard, yeah. and it tries to get you this way, it'll make sure you still keep going straight. So I've got that on both, both my bikes. Wow. And that'll save your butt from falling down. Every time I fall down, I'm going like two miles an hour. You know, I'm on the side of a hill, I go down, I hit a little rock or something, and it pops me down. Yeah. So that's supposed to, so that's, um, on this bike, it was about $600 because you have to get this bracket that has this pin sticking up. And so it's like a shock absorber if you hit it really hard and you can adjust the, the, the tightness of that um, to keep, make sure it always keeps going straight. And the road racers have to have stuff like this. Otherwise, they'll get speed wobbles, you know, at, you know 150 miles an hour and you get right. a thing going on. You have to have steering stabilizers. Okay. So um, I just decided to do it. I haven't fallen down on this yet. I mean, I've only got... Um, where are we at today? After my new friend that I just got. Okay, we have 496 miles in this puppy. Okay. And um, I put this little plastic like you put on your iPhones. Right. By the way, because the Protect. dog keeps scratching it with his paws. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. That's great. So, so it's kind of <laughs> unconventional because uh, the gas tank is in the rear. So let's see, what else did I do? Oh, two other things. There was a, um, on this side, there was a canister hanging down that was part of the smog control stuff. Uh -huh. And I ripped that off. Okay. Everybody does that. And then there's a little connector you do to attach that. And then I got a dongle. This has ABS brakes. Is your BMW? It does, yeah. Okay. So with this bike, with that little dongle that you put in under the seat. Here, hold that for me. Sure. Kind of aim it that way. Um, Okay, so the dongle is a, uh, uh, you just plug it in, and pull this little battery cover off. If I keep all my paperwork under there. So all it is is, there we go, put that down in a little aluminum. So all it is is this, this thing is plugged in right here. Mm -hmm. It's just a little part hanging down in there wherever I stuffed it and it just gets plugged into this part instead of that little uh, connector right there 
uh, you just lift that out and then you plug the dongle in. Now what that does, that allows you to turn off the, the dongle uh, or the ABS okay. so that you can, um, uh, if you want to be able to slide in a turn, you know, uh, right. do a little flat tracking or something like that, or you're coming down a long steep hill mm -hmm. and you want to drag the rear bake without the, the engine on or something like that, yeah. but you still want the front end to be rolling because mm -hmm. you don't want to tuck in on you, it allows you to use the rear brake as an anchor and still allow the ABS on the front. So okay. you can choose three different modes. Um, so that's, to me, that was very, that's, I mean, I'm just not used to ABS anyway, as in, you know, because I've sure. been riding a long time. Yeah, that makes sense. So put that all back there, somewhere or another. Case. Well, I don't know much about off-road riding, but that's the first thing we do when we get on the GS is off-road is turn the ABS off. Oh, okay. So, and there is a switch for that. <laughs> all right. So, but can you leave the front brake on? Yeah, the front brake's on. Yep. I mean, can you leave the front brake ABS and the rear brake off? Can you no, select that? I, I think, you know, it's a good question. My assumption okay. was that both, they both come off. Yeah, okay, so when you, on this bike, if you were to turn this thing on, see the little ABS light? Yep. And with the, um, if, if you were to hold this thing down, um, and then it starts flashing, there's no, OBA, no ABS at all. At all. I think that's what my If you lock it up, that's the way it is. Yeah. But some guys really like the idea that, okay, I don't want to lock up the front, but I would like to drag the rear. And I actually tested this up uh, over by Marshall going down a hill. I could feel the ABS coming on the front, yeah. and I was sliding on the rear with it. So that was kind of cool. So when I, if you turn this... more stable for you that way? Well, I think I could get used to it. I can see a good benefit of it because a lot of yeah. times I've stalled the motor because I've been trying to go down something steep that I was scared about. Mm -hmm. Now, if, and the way this is set up, by the way, is if you, with this, the kill switch on the off, and then you turn it on, um, then it's it's no ABS anywhere, and then then you turn this on to start the motor. Now there's no ABS uh, front or no. Oh no, that would be ABS front and rear. The way the sequence, you turn the okay, turn this off, turn on the, the key, and then then when you turn this on t to start the motor, you have ABS front and rear. If you turn off the key. And then, and leave this in the on position, which is like if you're a desert racer and you got to start with everybody else, you'll have this on, ready to go. Turn on the key. At this particular point, uh, the front wheel has ABS and the rear wheel does not have ABS. So as soon as you hit the electric starter to start your race, because mm -hmm. a lot of times they're dead engine, mm -hmm. right, you know, yep. then at least you've got the perfect setup for dirt. And then, then in either key position, if you go and push the button and hold it down, then it's no ABS at all. Gotcha. Okay, so, and then uh, cool. this thing also has mapping on it of where if you got the loaner bike, yeah. you know, I give you the bike and you got to let it, it the lo it's set up as a, a mild mandered motorcycle. Yep. And um, where it won't get you in any trouble, it won't come on really fast. I think that's kind of the mode it is during break in. There's also the mode where they shut off all controls at all and it's just all 68 horsepower ready to rip. And then the other, there's another mode, which is the really super mild mannered, where I'm in a rough and rocky terrain, and if I accidentally hit the throttle too hard, I don't want the thing to loop on me because I'm trying to go over a rock. Then there's right. another mode where you've come, you're in Mexico, and you got just got a bunch of ga bad gas, and you can put in that, and it changes the timing for bad octane or something, and so it allows you, to, and you're only supposed to run one tank of gas through it on that setting. So, okay. but once you, then you find some better gas, and now you're back to normal again. Gotcha. So they've really thought this out, I think, as far as being um, traveling. Works. Yeah, traveling. So here, okay. So right now we're in um, neutral. I'll just <laughs> turn it on and grab your helmet, and we'll just okay. um, turn that thing on. You know, I've been. Uh, I'd love to try it. But I just had two glasses of wine, and I had to go pick up the Jeep from, from Fordyce, who does the work on our cars. Yeah. So, I'll just, another time, we can swap rides or something. Yeah, I was hoping to at least meet you today. Yeah. You know, I mean, the season is just beginning. It's, it's got plenty of gas.
gas in it. You know, I got your bike as collateral. So if you steal it, just leave me the key. I don't know. Then we're good to go. And this is kind of fun. It's because of the the seat. It goes so far because the gas tank is here. There's more room for the dog to rest on. You know. Yeah. And so it also, if, if you're a uh, go dirt bike riding and you get into a berm or you want to turn it really fast, you want to get your nuts right over the front wheel as much as possible. You can't do that on a bike like this. You are always back here where you're, you're always the weight is on the rear. So you can move up and down the seat. So try things. I mean, get it on a little bit in second gear. Give a little bit of gas. See if it comes up on you a little bit. You should be okay. You know? I'll tell you, I'll tell you why I'm looking at this when I get back. All right. Yeah, and it's, even though this aftermarket muffler, it's not very loud. Not at all. You know, um, and it should have more horsepower. You can change the sensor to make it louder, which will give you a little more poop on it. But mostly it's just lighter, and it's easier for me to pick up. Like, like here. Hold, hold that camera. Okay, now if you did that with your bike, You'd be struggling. I'd with be it, calling right? you. <laughs> <laughs> so with this one though, it's it comes right up. And oh great! I, and I have a bad back. Yeah. So and that's why I bought the 500, by the way. So if you like this and you want to try something a little bit lighter, right? Be the same horsepower to weight ratio, but only mm. 240 pounds compared to 315 that this has. Wow. Or 500 like yours is, or yeah. whatever that. Might even be six. Yeah. The way okay. it's loaded up. Okay. Um, yeah, that's no that's no fun to pick up, especially when you're on the slope the other way. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Are you and there's, oh yeah, and there's places if you wanna if you get something like this. I mean, even Switzerland Trail you can take this on. Yeah. If you just want to try it. Which one? It's called Switzerland Trail. Yeah. Above Gold Hill. You know, last year some of the guys took off on Switzerland Trail, and I actually lost them and I couldn't find the road. And oh. I had to meet them in Boulder later. Okay. I missed out on my, my oh, trail ride. First rule of trail riding, whoever's in the back when there's a, a Y in the road, yeah. they have to stop till the next guy sees which way they went. Yeah. You know? So they're not very experienced trail riders. <laughs> you know? yeah, oh, yeah, have fun. Thank you, yeah. Right, baby. Oh, yeah, you'll as soon as you take off on it, you'll just say, Whoopee! Let me turn that down a little bit. Okay. Deacon, what do you think? You're a little jealous that they didn't get to go for a ride with you? Huh? Woohoo! How was it? So different. Yeah. So different. It was like being on a bicycle with a, you know, a motor. Oh. <laughs> Compared to that, you know? Yeah, and his bike before that was a Harley. Yeah. So he did a major change just going into a adventure well, going touring bike. going from a Harley to that, it's much more, you know. And then, yeah, this is even more so. You know, the Harley was fun. It was like laid back, you know. Getting on this, it was so, uh, you know, ergonomic. Uh-huh. You know, for a foot, three, two, skinny guy, that thing is so comfortable. Yeah. Sitting upright like that and tucked in. So, so I, you know, I fell in love with it right away. Oh, by the way, um, Chris, this is uh, Dave. Oh. Dave Dave uh, works over by a Vista Hospital in, that, oh, by, in Monarch High School. Yeah. You know, and um, he contacted me through the one of my videos on YouTube. So... Yeah. Offered it. He said he's interested in getting one and never saw one and says we'll come by and ride it. So he's ridden it. Yeah. Get Fine. any air under the front tire or anything? <laughs> a little bit. Just Yay. A little, which I've never done on this. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nor have I on my Harley. <laughs> well, if you sit back farther, it, it'll come up even quicker. Or if I change the mapping. Yeah. You know? But, well, uh, you know. Yeah, but well, even with my 50 pound dog on it, if I sit, if I sit back and I 
all of a sudden grab in second, go whomp like that, yeah. it'll come up. Sweet. You know. Are you are you good with wheelies? I used to be. Right now, I'm too scared. I I, yeah. I don't have the balance. The sure. the stuff. There's a certain particular point you want to be at to hold a sustained wheelie, mm -hmm. and I'll pop it up and it'll come back down, or I'll get air over a kicker. You know, that's, that's like a little bump in the road. Yeah. yeah. But I I don't know. I just uh, I'm, I'm trying other things with my other bike that I would like to do, like going over logs where you lift it up. But you want to try the 500 by chance? No. Okay. That was, that was this? fine. Yeah. Okay. Because no, that one, there's it. no controls in the mapping. It just wants to go. Yeah. It, um, yeah, no, that was, that was fun. So what's your impression then compared to? Um, compared to? <laughs> well, like uh, of the BMW for adventure, you think this is the kind of thing that you might want to get in place of your bike or just as an addition to it? So if you want to go to... A little bit gnarlier trails, but still be able to drive to the trail. You know, uh, I'd have to tell you the real story why why I'm even looking at it. Okay. But I think for me, I would stay with this because I love I love road riding. Uh, I love taking long trips on pavement. Um, but I do like I do like the experience I had. We did some single track with this at mm -hmm. Rampart, and I really enjoyed that. Um, so I, you know, for me, I can see moving in this direction, sort of, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't planning on it. Mm -hmm. um, I should tell you the real story. Uh, one a, motorcycle is never enough. Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> and this thing is, you know, this thing's so expensive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're gate. afraid to hurt it, but. Yeah, yeah. I'm, actually, I'm okay with that. Uh, not too bad. But it didn't leave me much room to pick up a few motorcycles. You know, mm -hmm. versus going the other way, you know. Yeah. Just having a few, you know. Oh, true. For what you pay for this and the 500, that's what this one costs, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I'm smelling some antifreeze. You think that's me? It must be, because it's the only one that's been driving. Did you, uh, are you the one he was teaching to ride? No. You, you no, he's... You were teaching your neighbor once. Yeah. Okay. Uh, although Chris has a Honda that he loaned to neighbor Reed. Okay. And he was riding it, and then Reed's father borrowed my Suzuki, and then took out the mailbox, okay. which is why there's a motorcycle tie down here. So that's what's kind of holding it in place. So if based upon that evidence, I probably am not a very good motorcycle instructor. <laughs> that's okay. See, it used to be here. Hard way, right? Okay, so. That's great. So you know what happened is. Um, there's a rental shop in Boulder called Motorob, House of Motorob. You familiar with it? No. They do adventure motorcycling. That's their specialty. Oh. So he, he rents for, you know, guys coming in from all over the country ah. that want to rent a fleet of bikes. He's got, I think he's got up to 14 bikes now in his fleet. All different types. KTM 1200 Adventures. The He's got three GS, uh, wow. you know, large ones. Um, so... You know, he's he's been repairing my bike and taking care of things. Put some new tires on it recently. So these are the new TKC 70s that uh -huh. just came out. And um, we got talking, and what he every once in a while he gets an investor that wants to buy a bike for his fleet. And so I the idea, and I said, well, what do you need? Oh, so it's a loaner. It's it's a loaner. So okay. he rents it. I get I think I get 40 percent. He gets 60, and anything that rents out during the year. So I said, what do, you, what do you need in your fleet? And he said, the Enduro 690 or a, a BMW 700 or the, uh, what's the other one, the Triumph uh, 800. Mm -hmm. So looking at all the price points, this one, of, of course, was 10.5 out the door. And uh, I thought, hell, you know, this wasn't, it wasn't my intention to buy this to ride. It was to give him, give him a bike for his fleet. I see. Now, the nice thing is, if I give him a bike for his fleet, I have access to 14 bikes anytime I want them, cool. as long as they're not rented. Uh -huh. So that opened me up to three or four more big GSs, and I, I would see. I would have sold this um, and just gone that route. This would have been uh, statistically paid for by the rentals. Uh, if you look at the numbers, how long? How long? Yeah. What? Well, he's he's shown me I'd probably make about three grand a year renting the bike. So in three years, and it's yeah. you paid for the bike, but it's worn out, and you're normally into a new one anyway. 
Exactly. Yeah. Mm. So I mean, you know, I don't care what I get for it when I sold it. But so. these bikes, of course, they, you know, they, they're coming with the knobbies. Yep. Right. They're so they're not really set up for. Well, no, that, lots of road traveling. That was the other piece. You know, like he said, you know, you get a guy that's going to rent this bike from, you know, he's going to want to go off road. Yeah. Versus this guy, you know, he's pretty much going to stay he's on timid. road. Yeah. So you, the repair factor on this bike might be greater. Um, with that said, the renter always pays for every everything that needs to be repaired. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's no money out of my pocket. So we could, Chris, you could just rent a bike for Moab then. What do you think? All right. Chris <laughs> is going to go. He's talking about buying a 350, KTM 350. Okay. Is it an XCW? Yeah, XCW. XCW okay. out of Topeka, Kansas for well, a ride no, in I'm Moab. I'm I don't have to go there. I'm hoping that uh, maybe Lenny up there can uh, find one and he's willing to, that if the rebate is the same, oh. then they'll... Get... You just buy it from them. So, yeah, I'm going to call oh, them and Oh, I would feel much better for that then. I, I would really like to do that, but if they can't, it might be worth the drive out to Topeka. We'll see. It's not that far away. Are you guys smelling antifreeze too? No, I'm not really. So you ride? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've been a trail rider, and you know, I've ridden an XR250 for years and years and years and years and years. And years and years and years and gotcha. For a single track and what I do, all the bike nope. you ever need. Yeah. And it's reliable, you don't need to yeah, do hold anything. I gotta put the seat back on. Sure. So, um, but I'm kind of ready to hop up a little bit and have a little more fun with something that has yeah. more goose to it. Cause I don't think I had this on. There are already, things that we get into that. You mean I could have felt I could have fallen off? <laughs> you could have. <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed it before I took off. It was sliding up front a little bit. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I figured that was it. All right, you didn't get it snapped down enough after showing you everything. I'm still alive. That's good. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. So that's that's my story. And, uh, okay. I've been so busy. Uh, well, it'd be a shame for as many people as want these things yeah. to tie one up in a in a rental, in a rental fleet <laughs> would be really sucky. Well. You know, when there's so many, I mean, for rental, you could do KLRs and Yamahas and right. other stuff that, you yeah. know. But, but you, I, know, you know, it's interesting. I did run across a pack of guys on. Uh, uh, no, no, okay. Good. Good change. Um, Brea's Pass between Como, where my cabin is, and the um, and Breckenridge, and they'd come across over, and they were from Alaska. Mm -hmm. And they come down. They rented some bikes from somebody. Could have been your guy. Yeah. And uh, and. They had BMWs, and one guy had a Triumph, but he, well, he was on a BMW, but he said he started out with a Triumph, and he brought yeah. him back. He said it was just absolutely horrible okay. for what they were doing and stuff. So, anyway, here we are. And these were stock tires? That's how they come. That's great. Yeah, so it's knobbies. The, if, if you look at the stuff online, it, it appears as if they're... Uh, um, they're more road like yours are, but that's a European version. Mm. For the U.S. version, they're all knobs. Okay. So I'm, you know, ultimately open when I started thinking about it. You know, for certain rides they do, mm -hmm. I'd say, well, I'd, I'd grab my 690 and take that, you know, for the afternoon. Yeah. So I, it just kind of open, might open a door for me to kind of get more into some well, fun stuff. Well, you have to understand. Can you buy it? Can you have your bike whenever you want it? Yeah. No. Oh, are, yeah. Are, yeah are, you, are you tied into his rental schedule? I'm into his schedule. So if this is rented, I can't I can't take it, obviously. When I own an so airplane. So he's making 60% yeah. on your bike, right. and you don't get to use it if you want to use it, and he's got to rent it. If he's got to rent it. But that's the point. Yeah. You want to rent it anyways. Well, but see, there's other things besides that. Now you can depreciate the bike on your taxes because it's a business asset. Exactly. When I owned an airplane... Uh, um, there was guys always wanting to use the airplane for the school. i got to go next door. i you know? get my kid off. Okay. Take All right, care. Talk to you later. You and I, I'll, I'll head up with you. I, I, I and talk to you a little bit more. I can I run out something. to Topeka and back in one day. That's what I thought. Yeah, he's thinking about um, 
renting these things out, buying them as an investment, and then rent them out to people. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, because these are about half the cost of... No, it's a guy, he's already got a business in Boulder. Uh -huh. I was just going to buy one for him and let him manage it. Oh. Um, he, he does that. He can't afford to buy the whole fleet himself. Okay. So he'll have someone like me okay. buy one for him. It's got to be new. Uh -huh. So this is a 1200 GS? This is, yeah, GSA. GSA. Um, so anyways, yeah, that's, you know, he, he's got a few select people that buy, like, like maybe they live in Florida. But they, you know, all right. Huge. Interesting. Really? Okay. Really? Who's doing it? It's a meetup group. Who's doing it? It's well, it's a meetup group. So there's three guys that are. Does it cost anything? Are they what? Does it cost anything? No. no. Oh, I'd like to do that. I'll send you a link. Okay. What All date? Right. Uh, what's that? What date? April 25th. Okay, I'll be back in time. Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're getting back on the 22nd from Moab. It was so popular, I think uh, they started a second group for the day. So they're going to go out at uh, 10 in the morning for two or three hours, and then they're going to start a 1 o'clock group. Okay. So, kind of fun. so what no bike do you think I ought to bring, the 690 or the 500? I'd say the 6. All right. First of all, you want to drive down there, right? Not really. Yeah. A lot of guys do. Yeah. yeah. If there's freeway in between, if I can go down Santa Fe, all the way down Wadsworth and Santa Fe, yep. then that'd be okay. And I especially like if I could bring my dog. That's right. You know? Yeah. Then he could ride with me on the, that stuff. Right. That would be cool. We could film that. Yeah. Yeah, give me the link. Thank I you, like buddy. You know. All right. Bye. Be careful out there.